Hey everyone, welcome back to Fixing Critters on the Farm. Sometimes when you raise pigs, you're going to end up with what, like a runt or a sickly pig. Um, and you might want to step in and try to keep that piggy alive for a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk today about how to tube feed. So here we have this little piggy. It's been in the house all night. It came in very shaky with like neurological symptoms, you know, on its side, kind of spinning around. Its eyes weren't, weren't focused. Um, I started out by giving it some warm uh, water with honey and baking soda mixed into it. The idea to get its sugars back up and to kind of normalize its, I don't know, acidity, I suppose. Um, I've read that that works and it seemed to have worked. Um, we also put some fluid underneath the skin here. We tended the skin up and injected some um, like saline solution under the skin, about 30 cc's, 15 cc's on both sides, uh, just to kind of get it hydrated a little bit. And then every two hours, I got up and fed it some um, formula that I mixed up uh, via feeding tube. It's not really ready to try to nurse out of a bottle or drink out of a, a bowl. It's still kind of uncoordinated. So we keep tube feeding it for every two hours or so um, until it seems to kind of get itself back together. It started moving its bowels and um, it'll stand up and kind of walk around now. So we're on the right track. Doesn't mean it's going to survive, but at least we gave it a fighting chance. So I'm going to show you how I do this and hopefully you'll learn something from this. All right. So this is what I do. I've got a little pot here and I have a mixture that I call my, my piglet formula. And it's basically a ratio of um, an egg yolk, a quart of milk and a pint of half and half. And we have a cow here on the farm. So I use whole raw milk to, to do these and it's I don't measure it super carefully I just kind of pour some stuff in there and, and get it about right I give it a good shake before I start so that the fat isn't all at the top because it's obviously being raw milk it's not homogenized so it tends to um, the fat rises so this piggy is now getting one ounce which is 30 cc's 30 milliliters of fluid every two hours so I'll draw that up Like that, and I'll squirt it into my little pot here. Now to this, I add two drops of raw honey. And that's just because I want to keep this piggy's sugar high, keep its sugars up, because it seems to be kind of having sugar issues. And then this is just a vitamin mineral um, stuff, powder you can get like at a feed store, or not minerals, vitamins and, vitamins and electrolytes, which you can get that at a feed store. And I just take the tiniest little bit. So, and this stuff's kind of, kind of old, but like that, that's actually quite too much. And I add that to it. And then the last thing I add, just is just to kind of stop scours before they start, hopefully. Um, scours being um, diarrhea, which is really common in bottle-fed and tube-fed piggies. Um, this is just a probiotic. This, In this case, it's a product called PB8, but it doesn't really matter what you use. And I just add a little bit of it to, to the milk. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat that. And normally I have a one of those little point-and-shoot thermometers, but it got dropped on the ground the other day, so I don't have that anymore. It's not working. But basically, I heat this up, get the honey mixed in there. That's what I'm scraping around on. And I just try to check it with my knuckle. I want it to feel fairly warm to the touch. We don't want to chill the piggy, but we don't want it to be too hot either. That's probably good. that on there. And we'll get the piglet. You can see he's pretty weak. So what we want this tube feeder to do, we want to kind of gauge it about, hold it, about that far. 
Okay, that's about where the stomach is. We don't want to hit the lungs, we want it to go down into the stomach. So we want, we want to make sure that we get it in there far enough. If we have it only to here, inside the piggy's throat, um, it's going to be deposited in his throat and it's going to drown him. He's not going to be able to really swallow it fast enough. The way I do this is I kind of cradle their head in my hand like that. And what that does is it kind of relaxes them and helps to get this, this juncture here open so that the tube will pass where I need it to go. Let's really quickly here um, talk about the structures inside the little piggy's mouth so that we kind of know what we're doing um, so that people feel a little more comfortable with what, uh, you know, sending a feeding tube into a piggy's throat. So here we have, you know, the tongue. The epiglottis is this little flappy piece right here. And the trachea is the windpipe, which if you feel your own throat, you'll feel it's ringed with uh, cartilage. Okay, and then the esophagus, which is where the food goes, is this red one. So I basically have it, the red one is where the food goes, the blue one, is where the air goes and this piece here can flap shut to close off the airway so that food gets down that's when you swallow that's kind of what's going on with this piece here so when we pass a feeding tube into our piggy um you can feel fairly confident i you know you guys if you decide to do this give it a try you're probably not going to hurt anything worst case scenario unfortunately you drowned your you know baby animal with the food but most likely if you stretch the head up um you give this area here you make it kind of open more this way than it is this way. Kind of when you, you know, when you hang a piggy or your baby goat or your lamb or whatever by the, the head the way I did. Um, you make it pretty good chance you're going to end up in the right spot. So our goal here is to put this in the groove of the cheek, kind of, right? In the groove of the cheek and let it sort of slide down. As you get to this point here, the baby animal most likely will start to kind of swallow. Use that moosh motion, the swallowing motion, to help kind of guide this down the esophagus. And uh, once they start swallowing it, you just keep pushing it down and through there. This is really hard to do holding a camera. Anyway, and go ahead and pass it down into the stomach. Once you get there, um, then it's safe. Okay, you're way past anywhere where the air is. Um, use my little pointer stick here instead. Um, you know, and if you overfill it, it can start backing up here and end up coming in through here, but that's unlikely. You know, if, if you're using reasonable amounts of fluid, uh, the feeding tube will deposit it way down here in the stomach. Um, then when it's all said and done, the reason you pinch it off, you pinch the tube off here, is so that when you're bringing it back up, it's not leaking milk and depositing it right there, which could of course end up going down here and into the lungs. So our goal is to just kind of get that tube, pinch it off while it's down in the stomach, pinch it and pull it out as quick, whoops, pull the whole thing away. Pull it out as quickly as we can so that we clear that airway. Yeah. Run this into the side of the mouth, and it's okay if it takes several times. Run into the side of the mouth, and I just gently push it down the groove alongside the cheek there. If you look at the throat, you can see him swallowing. You see the swallowing? You can sort of see the tubes in there. Now, if he's still breathing with the tube in there, all right, so see how far I've gotten it in there, right? So now, I just hang the piggy like this, and I just slowly push this down in little swallows. I don't like to go all at once fast, just because, I don't know, it could stress him out. You gotta keep an eye that they're not spitting the tube up as you go. Now I listen for the air gurgle. So that I've got it all in there, it'll go like like that. I pinch the tube off with my fingernail and my thumb hand here, my finger, and I pull it out quickly. Okay. Piggy, get better. Mm, yum, yum. Hopefully, this piggy gets strong enough 
to start nursing on its own. And then it can uh, feed itself. You want to make sure when you're done that you get everything nice and clean and rinsed out and put it away so that you can use it again two hours later. Okay, and that's pretty much it. It's a lot of work and it's not always successful. But if you're like me, you can't just watch them die and leave them to the way it's gonna be. And you're gonna spend the time and a lot of sleepless nights maybe you'll save a few along the way hopefully you do all right have a good one you guys bye